Hi there, welcome home. I'm Jarrell, this is Mountain Home. Today I wanted to answer a question that's been asked a couple times from my viewers, and that is in regards to the Gold Tone F12, why don't you just put a capo on fret 12 of a 12 string guitar? It's the same thing. So, I'm just going to very quickly show you a demonstration of that and explain why this is such a different instrument, why it's so unique and has a unique voice and tonal quality when compared to a 12 string guitar with a capo on fret 12. So let's just go ahead and play our G chord here. Let's go ahead and play our E chord. And now let's go ahead and listen to those same chords on a 12 string guitar. Alright, so we have our 12 string here. This is a chord, and I'm just going to take this capo and it appears that you actually can't. You can't actually fit a capo on fret 12 because that is where the heel of the guitar is. So there is your answer. Isn't it the same thing as putting a capo on fret 12 of a guitar? No, it's not because you can't put a capo on fret 12 of a guitar. The heel is there, the capo won't fit. You could have a different shaped capo, but it would end up sliding up and it would end up going to uh, fret uh, 11. So there's the short answer is you can't. There is no equivalent, but even if you could, you can hear the total difference in the voice of the instrument. So I'm going to just go ahead and set my uh, fingers all across the fret 12 here. Have a listen to that. Let's go back to the gold tone F12. What you're hearing is that the 12 string guitar, even if you bar, the 12th fret feels very soft. It has a very weak attack and it is warm. It generally has a, a deeper a uh, more warm voice, and that is because the instrument is really designed for chord bashing. They know that people are just going to be knocking out chords on this thing, and so it's designed for that, and the strings are looser. And in terms of physics, the voice of the instrument is largely determined by the uh, type of force that's being applied to the top of the instrument. These strings are mounted inside the instrument, and so they are applying a leverage force. As the strings pull in that direction, they are applying a leverage force, uh, which pushes that way down onto the resonating surface. And that generally results in a very warm, very deep, very robust, uh, darker color. Uh, generally favors the warms and the lows uh, in terms of the frequency um, range, and it's very pleasing, very pleasant for a guitar to have that leverage force, but it generally means that you have a weaker attack, which is great because you don't necessarily want a strong attack when you are strumming your chords. When you have a strong attack, generally it's great for percussives or for playing lead, but it's quite soft and warm. Mandolin body instruments do not have a leverage force when it comes to the strings. The strings are mounted on a tailpiece and they push down. This results in an instrument voice, which is um, not so strong when it comes to the lows and the mids, but when it comes to the higher frequency, they tend to be uh, stronger. They have a stronger attack, but it results in less sustain as well. Having a leverage force like on a standard guitar body results in more sustain, which is great, you know, for chords. Uh, for a mandolin instrument, there is less sustain. And because it is an arch-topped body, uh, that results in this brighter voice. Now you will find, of course, for example, jazz-style guitars which have arch tops and the tailpiece mounted strings which apply that downward force. And of course that changes the voice of the instruments. Those instruments, again, are not so ideal for chord bashing. So um, let's go ahead and just... Uh, have a listen, a bit of a, an audio sample of these instruments played side by side now.
it's much warmer, there's more sustain, but on the other side of that, it's also more muddy. You have the clarity of the shorter scale length, which results in a sweeter voice, less sustain, it's more clear, stronger attack. Let's go ahead and try some tremolo now. I'm going to switch picks to one of these thicker uh, three millimeters sort of things here. These are very rounded, uh, so I generally uh, prefer these when I need a tremolo. Let's go ahead and try that tremolo on the 12 string guitar. Just overall, in general, it's muddier and it's more difficult to get that kind of tremolo on a 12 string because the strings are significantly looser. There's substantially less overall tension on the strings, and because they're so floppy and loosey, it's difficult to get that kind of tremolo roll, whereas you generally get an easier, smoother tremolo roll on a mandolin style body because these strings have more tension on them. Just a little bit of a sound sample. So there's to answer the question. That's kind of the difference there. Uh, it's, my playing's been a bit sloppy. It's just been such a long, just been a long, long demanding, I want to say week, but the past couple of months for work have been so demanding. So I appreciate you checking in and uh, thanks for coming by. Everybody, you know, just, uh, I just want to spread a message of positivity out there. Make love, not war. Let your hair down and let it blow in the wind and go where the wind takes you. <laughs> thanks for watching. Come home again soon and I'll leave the porch light on for you.